The use of these colored contacts can be easy and fun. I'm wearing blue ones right now, but really have brown eyes. But without the right size, fitting, and hardness, they can be very dangerous. USC officials say the allegations Scale has made against them are untrue. The training and development specialist of USC Human Resources, Christina Nelson, says the university does all it can to protect its over 12,000 employees, including the ones working in this food court. Hey, movie lovers. I'm Caitlin DeRocher, and I'm here at the world premiere of Horrible Bosses 2. Hollywood's big night is finally here. I'm Caitlin DeRocher at the Dolby Theater, where the 87th Academy Awards are about to begin. Get your running shoes ready because Disney's McFarland is coming to theaters near you on February 20th. Live from the University of Southern California, Annenberg TV News. A jury has reached a verdict in the copyright infringement trial centered on the popular song, Blurred Lines. Good evening, I'm Caitlin DeRocher. This morning, federal and local law enforcement authorities conducted raids on several suspected birthing houses. Authorities say these businesses help pregnant women get to the U.S. so their children can be born as U.S. citizens. Hillary Clinton answered questions today about using her personal email for government purposes, saying she opted to use her personal account for, quote, convenience. Soraya Hernandez says she brought her boyfriend to get tested today in East Los Angeles because she feels it is important for her to protect herself from any STDs. I get tested all the time. Every time um, um, I get tested, um, it's usually when I have a new sexual partner. And he's my new sexual partner, and he's never been tested before. With more than 35 million people living with HIV today, people are working to raise awareness of the virus. One way to prevent the spread of the virus is by getting tested. People living in Los Angeles can go to clinics, hospitals, and even mobile testing centers such as the one behind me. In our mobile truck, which is that unit behind us, we go around uh, LA County uh, in different uh, target locations and offer HIV testing. A doctor from Altamed, a healthcare service that provides free testing, says getting tested is especially important for Los Angeles residents. The city is at high risk for HIV. The CDC says more than 60,000 people are living with the virus in Los Angeles. A high prevalence community in the United States is uh, defined as one in which more than one out of every thousand inhabitants has the infection. And we have many urban communities that actually meet that, that definition in the United States. Certainly LA is you know, definitely a high-risk community. There. One barrier to getting tested is the stigma associated with it. Some people feel too embarrassed to visit a clinic. The biggest uh, problem that we find is that people um, have a lot of shame and stigma, um, self-stigmatization, uh, because they feel like others are looking at them going in a truck and what, are, what people are going to think about them. Soraya's boyfriend admits he was nervous about getting tested, but both say it was worth getting done. Caitlin DeRocher, ATVN. Water is in high demand at USC with over 40,000 students using and consuming it. Today, members of the Metropolitan Water District, which provides water to the area, met to discuss the state's drought. One topic discussed was whether schools are doing enough to help. It's really been school district by school district, and uh, it hasn't been, we think, as, just as targeted as we'd like. But uh, we continue to work on it. We're continuing to develop programs that would be just aimed for schools. But like I said, they were a bit of a bureaucracy, and they certainly have their own bureaucracy, and sometimes it's been a little tricky getting them to work as well as we'd like. USC says they are working to find solutions to save more water. USC maintains a campus-wide water management system, and among other measures, has installed low flow fixtures and monitor soil moisture levels as well as weather conditions to provide only the necessary landscape irrigation. While there are numerous programs in place here at USC to help conserve water, many people believe that there is more universities could do to help end the drought, such as turn off water fountains like the one behind me. Well, I find it kind of strange that like in our dorms and stuff, they don't filter, they don't like put any hold on the amount of water we can use so basically like we still pay the same amount um, in our dorms and apartments even if like we use a ton of water. Well there are a lot of fountains still on and I don't think that really conserves water. California is currently in a state of emergency with the worst drought ever on record. Students can help by checking faucets and toilets for leaks, taking shorter showers and washing only full loads of laundry and dishes. A section of the Los Angeles River downstream from Griffith Park to the Figueroa Bridge, nicknamed the Glendale Narrows, seems like the perfect place to live. 
At least that's what Grove Ashley says he thought when he moved there. He says he quickly discovered just how wrong he was. It wasn't until I actually lived here and made more observations um, that I realized that there was a lot of abuses going on over there. Neighbors who live in the homes along this section of the river say they deal with noise and pollution issues that are coming from the Metrolink Central Maintenance Facility across the river from them. Examples were horns that would go on for minutes at a time, really loud horns, and trains that would idle for 36 hours at one time. Uh, the load tests that were happening here with all the pollution that was coming over here. Grove says the Metrolink pollution and noise is so bad it has changed the way his neighbors live their lives. My neighbor wouldn't let his kids come out of the house because when he'd smell the diesel, he'd have them go play inside the house rather than outside. I think that affected me more than anything else. That is why Grove, along with other community members, have teamed up to create the Northeast Residents for Clean Air Coalition. Just realized that there was no regard to that there was actually a neighborhood while they were doing these things and so I got involved because of that. Stephen Appleton is another resident of the area who is speaking out against the Metrolink. The big failure in this was that this facility, plain and simple, does not belong this approximate to homes um, and it also doesn't belong this approximate to uh, the Los Angeles River. With recent plans to expand the transportation service with a new light rail line, residents' concerns continue to grow. They wonder, is it really worth the $9 million it would cost to build? Metrolink's percentage of ridership for the region of Los Angeles is terribly low. Uh, at most, high 30,000s of passengers ride at peak times on this train for a 15 to 20 million person region. When you look at it that way, and you look at the local costs and the costs in the center of a key redevelopment area, you have to say, is this really serving? Since the coalition has been raising concerns, the Metrolink has conducted a health risk assessment of the facility and has reduced noise and pollution since then. Metrolink also agreed to purchase 20 new locomotives that emit less pollution. These trains are expected to be running by 2017. This is Caitlin DeRocher reporting.